Stephanie Miner is running as an independent candidate for governor in New York State. Uh, something the uh, the governor, Governor Andrew Cuomo, probably not too pleased about. Have you heard from the governor, Stephanie Miner? Um, I haven't, but you know, I don't think whether he's pleased or not about me entering the race. I think he should. He and his administration should be more focused on, you know, the fact that a million New Yorkers have left the state looking for opportunity elsewhere because they couldn't find it here. And, yeah. You know, I know Oneida County and central New York, we live this because we have family and friends who lose their family and friends because they want to stay here, but they go other places because there's no opportunity here. And That's what uh, this this campaign should be about in combination with the fact that corruption has just become the absolute norm in New York State, and it's unacceptable. He was, uh, listen, the governor was uh, was pretty bold, if you think about it, in, in his previous terms. Um, some of the things he's done have been really tough on education. The uh, The tax cap has really been difficult, very difficult on municipalities and and uh, certainly on, uh, uh, on education, because uh, it really kind of strangles them a little bit. It does, it, you know, it used to be you'd be you'd be judged if you raise taxes too high. Well, you might end up you might end up being elected out of office. Here, the governor is making it a uh, you know he's drawing a line in the, in the in the sand, which makes it tough. You were there. You were a mayor. How tough was it on you? Look, it's very tough. The, I think the property tax cap makes sense, but you can't do that alone. What you have to do is remove what is driving property taxes, and that's unfunded mandates. And issues like how New York State funds Medicaid, it makes localities pay, you know, about 30 percent of Medicaid costs, and localities have no way to control those costs. Uh, it, that's why our property taxes are higher than any uh, any other place in the country. So we need to remove that burden. That this part of the reason that we are struggling as a state, and particularly in upstate, is that we have deep seated problems. And they need real solutions, not just easy magic bullet that says, okay, we'll have a property tax cap and everything will be fine. No, that's, yeah. the property tax cap is like I like to say it's a, it's a top on a boiling pot of water, and it'll keep that water in that pot uh, for a little bit. But now with the Trump tax plan, they just turn the heat up. So you need to remove what is causing uh, those huge property taxes. Yeah, it's really it's, it's, it's the, the tax cap. I mean, you want to keep taxes down. But when these 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 ridiculous mandates keep being handed down from Albany, you know, uh, look, I and it, I think it's really fundamental that uh, in any of our lives, you know, if you pay the bill, you're going to be uh, very careful about what the services that you're getting, or you're going to watch that. But if somebody else is paying the bill, yeah, well, you know, we all as human beings tend to be a little bit more lax. Like, okay, well, and that's what we've had happen. New York State has driven. I think Cornell University said New York State has driven like 90 uh, percent of these costs down to localities and said you pay for them, and they take all the glory from all of the constituents and the vested interests who give them campaign contributions to say, hey, this is terrific, and then they make localities pay these onerous bills, and then people and businesses, small businesses in particular, saying we are you know dying under this uh, burden of these onerous property tax caps. Our utility costs are, and I saw, I think I saw a number, 44% higher in central New York than they are in other places. Electricity, the, these have to be addressed, and they can't be addressed if you just engage in these, this hyper-partisan yeah. yelling and screaming at each other. And if you just decide that, well, we're just going to have happy gas announcements and not really address the deep-seated underlying trends that are causing the system to work. We're just insiders. The economy's going in the wrong direction. And again, as I said uh, earlier on, all you have to do is uh, look at that data point that says a million people have left New York State for opportunity elsewhere. What do you say? Do you think uh, New York is not? Because uh, uh, when you look around the country, we're talking about a, a pretty healthy economy, it seems. And, and do you believe that, uh, that we're being left out here in New York? Well, look, I think uh, you're seeing New York City is a tremendous. Uh, engine of economic growth. But the farther away you get from New York City, the worse it is. And in fact, I saw a study that said above the Newburgh Bridge, we've had uh, 2% growth. And then there was a study from the New York Fed last year that said in the past eight years, Western New York, and uh, people sometimes count that as Syracuse and sometimes as Rochester, has actually lost jobs. But, you know, Bill, you and I, we we know that. We're living here. We see it every day. Uh, People are really struggling and trying to figure out how they're going to pay their property taxes, their health care, educate their children, 
but they they want to stay here because it's where their families are. It's it's a great quality of life. It's a wonderful place to live. That's why uh, I live here. But the government policies are not making are not helping solve real people's problems. Can you uh, fairly say that uh, the governor should be judged by uh, on the based on the the people he has surrounded himself with? And we look into the court systems right now. Uh, look, I Fair? think you can, I think you have to judge uh, all elected officials or people running for office on their track record of what they say uh, and what they actually accomplish. And, you know, Andrew Cuomo said in 2010 on the courthouse steps that he was going to root out corruption. And since that time, uh, we have seen more corruption. And it has, uh, you know, touched his inner sanctum with his right hand, uh, right hand guy, Joe Prococo. I mean, you can't you can't go a week in New York State without an announcement of an investigation, yeah, yeah. an indictment, a corruption trial. And that's unacceptable. There's a price of this corruption that all of us New Yorkers are paying and that the party establishment, the party leaders are profiting from. When the, and, yeah. When, when the governor was going uh, down the road of uh, nanotech, of course, that certainly hit here. A lot of money has been spent here and not much is going on up there right now. Buffalo Billions. Uh, he was talking about nanotech, and out of nowhere, he went to Syracuse and said, "As part of our nanotech expansion, we're going to uh, we're going to build a a a movie house, a a a a movie making a, a, a film, a film, a film a, hub, a film hub. We're going to make Syracuse the place where movies are made. This will be Hollywood East. Uh, how's that going? And how did that tie into nanotechnology?" Um, I'm not quite sure. I just need to, for my own sake, be precise about this. It was, who would have ever thought Hollywood would come to Onondaga? Yes. Did not come to Syracuse. Right, 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 right. Yes. And the answer, of course, is when he said that, I think most people in the room thought nobody. And yeah. it turns out, you know, six years later that nobody did think Hollywood was going to come to Onondaga. I, I can't quite figure out what the... Uh, what the rationale was, um, other than it was a great press conference and it was a great announcement where, you know, there were uh, state, uh, there were different phases that were going to be promised and millions and millions of dollars and films and it was going to be this great thing, similar to Quad C. I mean, yeah. how many announcements have, has Quad C had about thousands of jobs and more jobs and more jobs and more jobs and just wait, just wait, just wait. I mean, fundamentally, the nanotech economic development model uh, has been a failure. The solar city is, is a fraction of what was promised. Uh, you know, Canal Ponds in Rochester is empty. The film hub was just sold back to Onondaga County for a dollar plus millions of dollars in upkeep. Uh, Quad C, you know, how many hundreds of people applied for jobs in Quad C and went to job fairs uh, expecting something to happen? Yeah, uh, You know, it's just, it's, and after, you know, you, you understand why people get fed up with the system when they are told these things, um, and ultimately they never materialize. Well, and, and let's be honest, it puts people like, uh, people like you in a very difficult position because when the governor's coming in and making all these promises, you got to be like, this is awesome. Um, how do you not embrace that? And then once he creates and, and muddies up the water, he takes off, doesn't talk about it, just does flyovers, never lands, and you're left to deal with the with the mess. Well, Bill, uh, I didn't say, "Wow, this is terrific." I did. I don't go to those. I didn't go to those groundbreakings. I don't do those ribbon cuttings. And at the time, it was very, very difficult. Um, not. Uh, it was very difficult because I was advocating for my constituents and saying what I thought was accurate and true, um, and was you know subject to great scorn from uh, the, the establishment, uh, but I thought, you know, I was elected to do the right thing, and the right thing to say is this economic model, Startup New York or the Hunger Games or Nanotech, I don't see it working, and I don't see any indication that's going to work, and I'm tired of, of hearing politicians come in and make empty promises uh, to get campaign contributions and then disappear. So I'm different that way, which is why I'm running as an independent, to, you know, to say to people, I've always been independent. I've always stood up for what I think is right in my constituents' best interest. And now is at a time when our state is rife in corruption. Public policies are failing everybody. It's getting harder to uh, live in New York State, not easier. 
we need to disrupt the system and start focusing on solving real problems. Uh, I asked you yesterday, and you were in the midst of uh, some bad uh, coverage area with this expanded Internet that we have in New York State um, <laughs> and uh, self, self-service. Uh, but I asked you about, uh, you know, as you're driving down the thruway, you look to your right heading east, and you see uh, the Village of Illion and Remington Arms, the factory that is so old and, uh, and, and has been really beaten up over the last 10 years, uh, certainly in the last few years by this governor. Where do you stand on the Second Amendment? And uh, I, I almost feel as if the governor has, has said that there's no room for a gun maker in, in New York State. Look, I, I am a proponent of uh, reasonable uh, gun control. And I think that the issue that we are seeing uh, lay out in our country and certainly in our community is that we have to be able to talk to each other. And we have to be able to sit uh, at a table and listen to each other, even if we have different agreements on issues that we think are really important, like gun control. And when you just, uh, when you demonize people for something, then what you, you break down those relationships that uh, prevent you from getting to meaningful solutions. And Bill, you may, I, I'm sure you probably saw this story, but in December, there was a gun shop owner in Madison County. Uh, a, a student came in yep. who was acting suspiciously, and the gun shop owner, you know, went out, took a picture of the license plate, called the, called the sheriff and said, I don't feel right about this person. I think something's up. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, they found out that this student had plans to, uh, you know, to commit violence. Yeah. Now, if that gun <clears throat> shop owner felt that he was being demonized by the police department, by his community, by other people, would he have taken it upon himself to engage in what was both the morally, ethically, and responsible thing to do? I- I'm not so sure. Yeah. That's what I mean about we need to make sure that we stop yelling at each other and we start to realize that we are all Americans that that's more important than our party, and that we can have reasonable disagreements, but we can find areas where we do agree. Like, I'm, everybody wants to make sure that guns don't get into the hands of people who are mentally yep. ill yep. and that we don't have this kind of uh, mass shootings that has become a just an unacceptable occurrence in our country. But yep. I'm convinced that the way that we do that is by bringing people of differing views together to figure out how can we move forward, by the way, not, we have, by, not by demonizing each understood. other. Understood. Uh, we had that uh, gentleman, that gun owner, a uh, gun shop owner on the air, very interesting guy, and uh, his take on all of it was, uh, but uh, it was without him, who knows what could have happened at Syracuse University. Uh, talking to Stephanie Miner, independent candidate for governor in New York State. Uh, I want to ask just quickly, and, and then we'll let you go on education. Uh, the governor, uh, over the last, uh, well, it was probably five years ago, six years ago, created such a firestorm uh, with teachers, with parents, uh, Common Core. The layout, the rollout was awful, tying test scores to uh, to teachers' uh, evaluations. Uh, it was just a mess. And interestingly, the minute it got really, really ugly, and it did get ugly, the governor just kind of walked away and has left it to the legislature to fix what would you do with education and and this common, it's almost like Groundhog Day. Every year we hear the same story, schools not being funded, uh, schools like Syracuse schools, um, and certainly schools in our area. How would you handle education, and what's your assessment of the government's dealing with the, with education in New York? Well, clearly, you know, we're not doing it correctly because we have the number one spending per pupil, and yet our outcomes are nowhere near uh, where they need to be. So there is a, there is a, there's something wrong with how we are distributing money and how effectively we are doing it. That being said, we have to make sure that, once again, we talk to everybody. There has to be room in the system for vibrant public schools to make sure children of all incomes and all backgrounds have access to a good education. It's That is the most fundamental economic development there is. But also understanding that parents should have choices between parochial schools and charter schools, everybody should be, there should be a network of education where every parent can make the choice that is right for their child. And again, demonizing people, whether at one point you're demonizing public school teachers or then you're demonizing charter schools, uh, it doesn't make any sense. We have to work together on this. That's the only way we're going to get solutions. And finally, your take on uh, on the uh, the Texas border, what's going on there right now, and the governor's reaction to the president. What do you think? 
Oh, look, I, I'm sickened by what's going on at, at the Texas border. I, I, you know, the idea of ripping children away from their families is, uh, is it just, it's inconceivable to me um, that we are doing this. And uh, I think that the governor is right to do what he can to stop this from happening. Uh, this is, you know, the reason that people look at the Statue of Liberty uh, and the reason that we hold ourselves out is because we as Americans uh, say that we, this is not something that we would do. There is a place for mercy and for justice and for welcoming people uh, and making and then dealing with the issues of having to work out uh, how we deal with making sure that our border uh, is safe. But you don't do that by ripping children away from their uh, their parents. All right, uh, Stephanie Miner, let's do this again. Do it in studio. If you are making your way uh, through the uh, down the throughway, we'd love to have you in studio, and we appreciate your time. I appreciate it, Bill. Thanks again. Thanks right. for bearing with me yesterday. It, we, we got through it. Thanks so much. Enjoy Thanks. your day. All right. Yep, bye. Stephanie Miner, uh, independent candidate for governor, former mayor of uh, Syracuse. Uh, this is interesting because now you you have you you have Cynthia Nixon and Stephanie Miner, um, both that will draw off uh, off Democrat votes uh, for for Cuomo. Uh, is this the ticket for Molinaro? Certainly have to wonder. Got a break. WIBX.